welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I'm doing a little bit of a throwback today. It's really not a throwback. It's just from last week. But this story unfolded while I was out of town. I was in Miami with Ben and I was bummed to miss it. But there are some new updates. So now I can validate myself in bringing this story back up and talking about it with you guys. But today we're going to talk about City Bike Karen, as this person has not so lovingly been named. Before we get into this story, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. So last week, if you have not heard the story, a pregnant physician's assistant named Sarah, a lot of people were saying that she was a nurse, but I think it's not come out that she's actually a PA. I'm going to go with that. But either way, her name is Sarah. She was getting off a 12 hour shift at the hospital and she went to the city bike station that is nearby her hospital in New York City. She was going to get a bike to take home. And in doing so, she got into a bit of an altercation with a group of young black men who were standing by the city bike station. And I'm emphasizing their race because obviously it's 2023. So everybody online turned this into a racial issue. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me. Why you took his phone? I'm not touching you. You put, you put a your stomach on my head. Madu, stop. No, Madu, stop. No, no, no. No, I said no. I said sit down. Please help. Take your She's just crying. You're not crying. You're not crying. I got stupid. I got you. So there is a lot to unpack here. It went viral last week, and I think it now has like 15 million views, I think the original poster. And that guy took the video, he put it online, and there's just a lot going on. So obviously this was an intense situation and everybody on Twitter lost their shit and got very involved. People were pointing fingers with very little evidence and very little backstory and picking sides based on race. They were saying that this woman was using her like white crocodile tears to villainize these men. And then other people were saying like, this just goes to show how awful, you know, these black youth are in you know New York City all this it was just ridiculous it was all bullshit now a couple days later Greg Price did a great TikTok breaking it down and explaining what happened next because she got lawyers involved something happened with her job I'm gonna let him take it away because there's a lot to unpack and I want to move on to the next part of the story here we have yet another tale of systemic racism in America as well as another tale about the evils of the social media mob over the weekend, a video went viral of a woman on a bike share in New York City. The video shows her crying as five black dudes tell her that it's not her bike and try to take it from her. Based on that alone, the internet concluded that she's a racist. Because every time a white woman cries as five black guys are around her, that's apparently racism these days. It turns out that this woman, whose name is Sarah Cumry, bought the bike herself and that these guys were trying to steal it from her. Her lawyer gave the receipt for the bike to the New York Post. And the number on the receipt matches up to the number on the bike shown in the video. We now have her receipts. We know that she paid for the bike. And in the video, her coworker comes up and is saying like, hey guys, let's just move on. She can go to a different bike. Let's just redock the bike. You're gonna pull it out. And the guy was going, no, it's on my account right now. Like I took it out. It's like, no, you didn't. Nope. So we know that for sure. Remember that it was not on his account at that time. Woman is six months pregnant had just finished a 12 hour shift at the hospital she worked at and had got on this bike when these five guys came up to her and tried to take it from her. And she even lost her job because of it. She also had her address posted on Twitter and news outlets smeared her as a Karen, including this one that compared her to the woman who got Emmett Till lynched. She and her husband also had to flee their home in New York City due to all of the death threats that they were getting. There's also a verified GoFundMe being organized by her uncle, and I will post the link to it in the comments. And that GoFundMe now has over $120,000 worth of donations, so obviously people were rallying behind her, but this all happened very quickly. Like, these accusations came out, the video went viral, she was suspended from her job, but she and her husband fled Led the city all in a matter of like 24 to 48 hours. Did that go the way you thought it was going to go? Nope. And of course, we have to remember that this all happened in New York City. And I'm thinking about that. And it's like, if you live in New York City, you kind of have to expect that you're going to end up in one of these situations at some point. Like you're going to end up in a fight with somebody. It's become a very dangerous city. And if you do end up in one of these situations, you're going to want contingency medical. Contingency medical provides emergency antibiotic kits to keep you protected against common infections and symptoms. They offer several different packs so that you can choose one to match your lifestyle, whether that's exploring the outdoors, traveling, or just keeping some antibiotics nearby in the event of a supply chain disruption, an antibiotic shortage, or an emergency. 
emergency. If you're not sure which option is best for you, I suggest that you check out the GoPack. It is specifically designed to fit inside your carry-on luggage, but is also great for anybody exploring the outdoors where space is at a premium. The GoPack includes antibiotics to cure common infections, as well as medicine to treat symptoms that might otherwise ruin your trip. Each pack also includes access to the prescribing physician for guidance on safe and effective use of the medicines, as well as a booklet that outlines each infection and the proper course of treatment to get you back to your best health. So enjoy that summer sun and all of your vacations knowing that Contingency Medical has you covered. Right now, you can get $20 off any pack at contingencymedical.com with promo code COOPER. Again, that is contingencymedical.com, a promo code COOPER today. This will come in handy in case we end up in another pandemic, especially if you're in a city and you need to stay safe. But anyway, people commented under Greg's video and said, nowadays you're guilty until proven innocent, which is true in many, many different situations. I'm thinking about Me Too specifically. Somebody else said, bro, what can I believe? Really nothing these days. That's why you just need to sit back, wait for evidence to come out and chill the F out because everything moves so fast on social media and you have no idea what is real and what is not and what is performative outrage. Now, as Greg said, her lawyer gave the New York Post her city bike receipts showing that she did unlock the bike and that it was then pushed back in and relocked about a minute later. Here's the New York Post headline about that. New York City Hospital Karen paid for city bike at the center of viral fight with black man coming from the lawyer. But now, a few days later, the story has gotten even more complicated. The boy's sister made a TikTok showing his receipts, which is now going viral. And this dude who, he's just an insufferable person on TikTok. He stitched it and he has some commentary that I just want you guys to see. And he just bothers me and he irks me. So we're just gonna watch the whole thing. There's a lot of new information here. The only reason why Sarah Jane Comrie was able to produce this receipt for this bicycle is because she jumped over this young man standing right here who had his hands on the handlebars, jumped over him, impaled herself on his bike, and scans the QR code to begin the ride. How did all of this happen? And how do I know what happened? Because that young man is my little brother. First of all, just saying, does not mean that you know exactly what happens. People lie, families lie. We're just gonna clear that up because we have no idea right now. We're just about to watch this video. But being related to somebody does not mean that you know the truth if you were not there. Number 5603915 was in my brother's possession. At 7.19 p.m., they dock the bikes. Sarah Jane Comrie walks up to them, asks, hey, guys, can I use one of you guys' bikes? She says this as there are other bikes sitting idle at the bike rack. It's important to note. They politely decline. She asks them again, mentions that she's pregnant, and they still decline. Then, with my brother standing next to the bike with his hands on the handlebars, she jumps onto the bike, sits on the bike, and scans the QR code, thus beginning her ride. Mind you, the bike was in my brother's possession at this time. But it was not because he had docked the bike. Having your hands on something that is docked that you have stopped paying for does not mean that it is yours. There's a lot of nuance here, which really it should even, shouldn't even be that nuance because we can see the receipts from both parties and it just sounds a bit absurd, but you standing there doesn't mean that it's legally yours in that moment. So this screenshot is from six minutes after the previous ride ended. As you can see, 7.25 p.m. Previous ride ended 7.19 p.m. These gentlemen, these boys, did not steal this bike from Sarah Jane Comrie. But it's also important to note that the video that they were filming, they took that video at 7.24. So she had pulled the bike out at 7.24. It was not in his possession. It was not in his possession until 7.25 when he had come in and then scanned the QR code. Bingo. So there was a five minute period where this whole scandal of the city bike went down there's just a lot of holes here she stole the bike from them then be proceeded to weaponize her whiteness the video started being recorded at 7 24 p.m close to 7 25. um my brother's ride that was in the previous screenshot starts at 7 25. help 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 make trying to make it seem like these boys stole this bike from her the bike is on my brother's account. It wasn't. It wasn't yet, because it wasn't 725. We're gonna get to this in a minute, but I don't like anybody involved in this story. They're all so dramatic. Everything is blown out of proportion. It's a freaking bike, okay. Told you I'd seen receipts, but let's go ahead the and review some man. things. First and foremost, I would like to reiterate that for myself and many others that initially posted about this, we weren't talking about a stolen bike. We didn't care about a stolen bike. It was her behavior. It only became about a stolen bike 
after she released receipts and made claims that they were trying to steal her so bike. So you're saying you didn't care about anything that was actually happening. You didn't care if a bike was stolen or what the fight was about. You just cared about her weaponized whiteness and her crocodile tears and the fact that she was crying around black men. So obviously that must mean that she's a racist. Again, everybody involved in this is annoying me. Remember, her attorney said after a 12-hour shift, she got on an available bike, which no individuals were touching and paid for it through the app. As she backed it up from the docking station, a group of five people approached her and claimed the bike was theirs. One or more of the individuals in the group physically pushed her bike with her on it back into the docking station, causing it to relock. Which did happen because we have the alleged receipts from her lawyer where it was unlocked and immediately right back in and we saw it on the video. So we know that that at least did happen. And his story directly contradicts hers. He said, the she said. He provided go along with his account of what happened and they prove it no more or no less than her receipts do. And I know there's going to be people who are like, yeah, but it was docked. That proves that it was available and she scanned it. Yes. He is a 17-year-old man, boy, but I'm going to say a man in this instance because he's almost 17 years old. He's probably used city bikes before. If you dock it, it is not on your account anymore. Especially since there were other bikes available that she could have taken. And that is a very important fact because there were other bikes available. Again, why well, I don't like anybody involved in this because both parties could have gotten a different bike. And you want to talk about being defamed? There are a ton of articles that paint that young man as a thief. This is from a day ago. Critics called City Bike Karen a racist. Then the facts came out. This guy then goes on and does this whole spiel about how this young man has been defamed more than this other woman. It's very all over the place. I don't really care. So TLDR, the boys rented these bikes. They docked them for about five minutes. She came up. She tried to rent one of the bikes that they had been using, which had already been docked and put away. So they were available for use. They did not want her to rent one of the bikes that they had used. So they got into a scuffle. And in my opinion, none of this looks good for anyone. This PA, Sarah, she could have gone to one of the many other bikes that was available, but she chose to push and fight for this specific one. I don't know why, but she did. And similarly, the young men could have also gone to one of the readily available other bikes than pick a fight with this woman. And in the original video, you see the young man who was going by the alias Michael in all of these stories. So again, we don't even know his real name. Is he being defamed? We don't know her name. This woman is. She lost her job. Okay, that's just an aside. But anyway, in the original video, you see his friend saying like, bro, leave it alone. It's not a big deal. Like, please, like there's other bikes, whatever. And he is intentionally keeping this going and fighting with her. It feels like both of the people in this situation had something to prove by fighting over this bike, which is so absurd. And if you are wondering why Michael was maybe trying to keep this bike or be able to have a bike to get back home, apparently with a city bike subscription, you can save money by docking your bike every 30 minutes. I'm not sure exactly why, but that's what it says online. I'll link it, you know, right here so you can see. And people are assuming that that is what he was doing if he was just sitting at the docking station, not riding it, not checking anything out, but wanting to keep his bike. And I don't think you have to take out the same bike. I think you just have to dock for a minute and then get back on. Somebody replied and said, the whole purpose of the redocking and waiting is to prevent the monopolization of bikes. Once redocked, they are available for others to take. These kids aren't the lords of city bike docks and they cannot prevent others from renting them out once docked. Those are just the facts. So still, he could have let it go and checked out another bike when they were ready to go again, when the five minute period or whenever they were ready to continue on their ride and do another 30 minutes. Now, after this latest update went viral, people are still pretty split about how this ends up looking for all the parties involved. One person said, I hope you realize how much worse it made it for these young men. If they docked the bike, it is no longer theirs. Yes, she could have used another bike, but that is not the conversation here. She did not steal anything if he ended his ride. Somebody else said, weaponized whiteness is the most horrifically honest interpretation of that behavior I have ever heard. Somebody else said, so he docked the bike. It is no longer his. Give up on this. Take the L. Somebody else said, so it was her bike after all. Nice. Somebody else said this lady knew exactly what she was doing, which is why she hid her employee ID as soon as she saw that she was being recorded. She knew she was wrong. I'm glad her employer clipped her anyway. She got what she deserved. Somebody else said, you realize this story didn't help him right. He docked the bike, meaning it was no longer in his possession slash ownership. She took it and paid for it, which she did. We don't know how that happened, how the scuffle took place, but it was in her possession at 724. Now, taking emotions out of this and what would have been the socially decent and correct thing to do in this situation, based on the evidence that we have in the crazy mystery of the city bike, she did not steal the bike. It was docked. It was available in the system. She was able to rent it. He tried to take the back bike and it was docked shortly after she checked it out. We see them push it back in. Somebody replied and summed up my feelings about it and said, this seems like a he said, she said. Eventually, I hope to hear what actually happened by an unbiased source. 
Oh, well, I really don't care at this point because it's about a damn bike. New York PD was not called. Everybody went home. It was fine. But apparently we're still talking about it. Now, the last update I promise we'll be finished soon is that the boy has now given his side of the story as of this morning, like five minutes before I sat down to get hair and makeup done. This is on New York Post as well. Teen shares his version of events leading up to City Bike Feud with New York City hospital worker Sarah Cymru. And he said that she came up to the bike dock uh, where he and all of his friends were hanging out and she was going to rent one of the bikes. The boy said, no, that's my bike. I'm going to rent it. And then and Michael, who says that he was holding onto the bike's handlebars, claimed that he told her he was about to take the bike back out and then Cymru asked if he could, quote, help a pregnant woman out. Michael said he again declined and told her that he rode the bike from the Bronx and needed it to get home. Which again, why is she going after this one specific bike when there are other bikes available? And again, sir, why do you need this very specific bike to get home? I'm exhausted. Cymru then allegedly leaned over him and scanned the code with her phone and his hand still on the handlebars. Michael said she then attempted to push her way onto the bike and remove it from the docking station the teen alleged to the outlet. So after that, Sarah got on a different bike, which was available because there were more bikes, and she rode home. Michael then took the bike that was in the center of the scuffle, his old bike, but only had it out for six minutes and then returned it to that exact same docking station. So he didn't actually need it to go home right then. And then 30 minutes later, he rented it out again, made a couple of stops, but he eventually ended up back home around 10.30 that night. Now, personally, like I said at the beginning, I don't think that this video makes either party look good. The woman yelling help for some reason, maybe this is just me being sensitive, it rubbed me the wrong way in the video. I don't know why. I don't know if that's just me. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it was just because it was dramatic, but it was just, it was a bit weird. And the boys did escalate the situation by fighting with her and now trying to smear her as a racist along with the rest of social media. And the whole situation could have been avoided by her picking another bike to avoid any confrontation or him getting a different bike when he was ready to undock and go on another ride, which did not happen. He did not leave and go home for basically 40 more minutes. And the harmful part of this story is how out of proportion it has been blown and how this woman has lost her job and has had her reputation ruined because people saw a politically advantageous racial angle to play. This boy is still going under an alias. His reputation has not been ruined like hers has. She had to flee her home. It's a very, like, it's very, very different. If I had to guess if I'm gonna try to level with her, I'm guessing that she was tired. She was over everything. She just worked a 12 hour shift. She's six months pregnant. She wanted to get home. She was not interested in dealing with any BS. That's not racism. Could she have handled it better? Yes, of course. But this is what happened. I don't know what the boys were doing or why they were so hell bent on causing a problem. But again, no one looks good. And per usual, this is an exhausting story. But the only reason that we are talking about this at all is because people decided that this with some racial hot button story. And I really don't think it is. I think we can all move on and let these people figure it out. Thanks for watching this episode of the comment section. I hope you enjoyed it and that you maybe even learned something. If you've not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss an episode.